In this extremely dangerous video, we're going to be reacting in real time to an article in the mainstream media about Tesla's FSD beta software, featuring the man, the myth, the legend himself, Mr. Chuck Cook. Are we in for a FUD tsunami? Is this a hit piece full of lies and misinformation? Or is it actually reasonable? Well, let's find out. And a quick heads up, I posted another exclusive video on Patreon today, and this is the first time it has ever happened, but I couldn't even make it through to the end. I was reacting to some dipshits sharing their thoughts and opinions about Elon Musk and the Twitter turnaround. The level of brain damage was so intense, so palpable. I couldn't handle it. That's right. I bitched out. I didn't make it to the end. That's how much it hurt my brain. You want to see me suffer in real time? <laughs> Head over to Patreon with the card in the corner or the link in the pinned comment. Here we are over on the New York Crimes. An interesting note, the actual URL of this article, Tesla self-driving flaws. Not that there was an agenda or anything, but I'm just pointing that out. So let's read on. What riding in a self-driving Tesla tells us about the future of autonomy? When we decided it was time for lunch, Chuck Cook tapped the digital display on the dashboard of his Tesla Model Y and told the car to drive us to the Bearded Pig, a barbecue joint on the other side of town. For a minute there, I thought they were making a trip to visit your girlfriend. Quote, I don't know how it's going to do, but I think it's going to do pretty good, he said, with the folksy, infectious enthusiasm he brought to nearly every moment of our day-long tour of Jacksonville, Florida, in a car that could drive itself. Well, almost drive itself. If you guys want to watch through the videos actually in this article, there's a link in the description. I'm going to skip over them, but they're worth watching as well. For more than two years, Tesla has been testing a technology that calls full self-driving, conspicuous lack of beta there, but we'll give him a pass, with Mr. Cook, a 53-year-old airline pilot, an amateur beekeeper, and a limited number of car owners across the country. <laughs> limited number now in excess of 160,000 prior to the announcement of North American wide release. So yes, technically a limited number, but it's a very large limited number. Tesla has long offered a driver assistance system called Autopilot, which can steer, brake and accelerate its cars on highways. But full self-driving is something different. It is an effort to extend this kind of technology beyond highways and onto city streets. This summer, Elon Musk, the company's techno king, previously known as the chief executive officer, said the system would be available in more than a million cars by the end of the year. Can confirm, this is now a fact. Anyone in North America who's paid for the FSD package has the option of downloading FSD beta. In August, we spent a day driving around with Mr. Cook again. Just for the record, this is an old article. I mean, the article's pretty new, but the experience, the build of FSD beta is months old. In August, we spent a day driving around with Mr. Cook and his Tesla to assess the progress of this experimental technology. Over six hours, his car navigated highways, exit ramps, city streets, roundabouts, bridges, and parking lots with his hands near or on the wheel and his eyes on the road. By the way, I like the fact that they've pointed out that driver A must pay attention and B, Chuck was. So far, so good. Not a whole lot of FUD. The car attempted more than 40 unprotected left-hand turns against oncoming traffic. It kept us on the edge of our seats. All the while, video cameras recorded everything we experienced, including a GoPro mounted on the roof, as well as eight cameras installed by Tesla on the front, back, and sides of the car. They included video of the trip to the bearded pig. The most telling moment came as the car drove us to lunch. After navigating heavy traffic on a four-lane road, taking an unexpected turn and quickly remapping its route to the restaurant, the car took a right turn onto a short street beside a small motel. You can see this here. I'm not gonna put the audio on again. If you guys wanna watch the full clip, check out the link in the description to watch the video. Point here, they're showing a few clips, a few segments from the trip. The car mostly doing a pretty decent job, but obviously there's gonna be a few fuck ups as well, hence being called beta. We've got an intervention clip here as well, but watch as the Tesla struggles to make sense of its environment, veering from the road into a motel parking lot. Chuck is forced to retake control. After driving around the motel, the car almost immediately made the same mistake, jerking into the lot this time. From a different angle, it was sobering to see how close we came to hitting a parked car after we rolled over a low curb separating the parking lot. In my opinion, coming close to hitting a parked car would involve slamming the brakes on to avoid hitting the parked car, not driving by without touching it, and never having been on a direct collision course in the first point. But again, this is the whole point. This is beta software. It's going to make mistakes. It's not going to be perfect. It's learning. That's why you need to pay attention all the time. Even the car's internal display, which uses red lines to denote boundaries that the computer vision the system detects, suggested that the car struggled to distinguish the curb between the road and the lot. And again, just pointing out, this is from the August build. The lot has improved since then. Still a long way to go, but it's important to understand. And as the article rightly points out, as I was saying, Tesla is constantly modifying the technology, working to fix its shortcomings. Since the day we drove around Jacksonville, the company has twice released new versions of the technology, I think it's now three times, that show signs of improvement. But the moment in the motel parking lot showed why it may be a long time before cars can safely drive anywhere on their own. I mean, imagine saying this with a learner driver, right? You got your kid, you're teaching them to drive in a parking lot for the first time. They do decent, but there's a few close calls. The next minute you think, gonna be a long time till this kid can drive a car safely. One of the things that I notice quite often when people are assessing the capabilities of Tesla's technology is they just focus on things that isn't getting right and completely miss the bigger picture. 
It is mind-blowing what we're seeing already. Absolutely fucking mind-blowing that these things are even coming close to not crashing every three milliseconds. Sure, some roughness around the edges. Sure, there's still a long way to go. But it is very important to understand. The narrative, at least my interpretation here in the article, is that it's going to be a very long time before these things are safely self-driving. I beg to differ again. My Tesla valuation model has the first Tesla robo-taxis doing their first paid pairs somewhere on Earth in 2024. And Tesla are publicly suggesting this will probably be sooner. The experiences of beta testers like Mr. Cook are a window into the enormously ambitious and expensive bet that Tesla is making on self-driving technology. Very fair point, it is an enormously ambitious and expensive bet. Then again, they are going after a multi-trillion dollar opportunity, so the risk reward seems to be there. It and other companies are investing billions into researching and developing autonomous vehicles. Taxis that can ferry us around town, trucks that will deliver our online orders. By the way, in case anyone forgot, Tesla Semi official deliveries begin December 1st, a couple of days from now. And maybe even one day cars that will take our children to soccer practice. Elon Musk and Tesla, obviously, did not respond to requests to participate in this story, but Mr. Cook's Model Y provides a glimpse into the future we are moving toward, which may prove to be safer, more reliable, and less stressful. Again, credit where it's due, this is true. I appreciate the fact this isn't a gigantic hit piece. Uh, this is gonna kill people. I appreciate it. However, after the M-dash here, but is still years away from reality. How many years exactly? Tesla's technology can work remarkably well. It changes lanes on its own, recognizes green lights, and is able to make ordinary turns against oncoming traffic. But every so often, it makes a mistake, forcing testers like Chuck to intervene. Quote, that moment shows that the car can only know what it is trained to know, Mr. Cook said of the sudden turn into the parking lot. Quote, the world is a big place, and there are many corner cases that Tesla may not have trained it for. Fair point, hence the huge beta release to train it. Experts say no system could possibly have the sophistication needed to handle every possible scenario on any road. And yes, so uh, we'll talk more about this point in a moment, but let's hear the reasoning from these so-called experts. This would require technology that mimics human reasoning, technology that we humans do not yet know how to build. I beg to differ on this. Now, I understand where they're coming from here. The only possible way for a car to drive like a human is if it is exactly the same as a human and thinks exactly like a human, which would also then suggest that the car is going to be turning its head, checking out tens every time it's well, if it's male car, do cars have genders? I don't know, it's in 2022, anything can be anything. I think they do. So all the male cars will just be getting distracted looking at hot women. Yes, that's what happens, sorry, it's true. So if we follow this logically, I think these experts are suggesting that until Tesla vehicles are turning their heads, getting distracted, crashing, road raging, etc., it's never gonna be able to drive like a human. Now, there is a grain of truth in this, but I actually don't believe it is necessary to have human level intelligence and the exact same capabilities, mimicking human reasoning, for these vehicles to drive safely. At the end of the day, it's a slightly more complicated ballistics problem. Such technology, called artificial general intelligence, is still very, very far away, said Andrew Clare, chief technology officer of the self-driving vehicle company Neuro. It is not something you or I or our kids should be banking on to help them get around in cars. Chuck's turn. In the tight-knit community of Tesla enthusiasts, stockholders, bloggers, and social media mavens, geez, I haven't heard that word in a while, Chuck Cook is famous. This summer, Mr. Musk noticed the meticulous way he explored the boundaries of the technology in a series of YouTube videos. Mr. Cook had been posting online clips of his Tesla trying to navigate an unprotected left turn near his home in Jacksonville. Mr. Cook uses money from YouTube ads and donations from viewers to pay for cameras and other equipment. To make this turn, the car must pass through three lanes of traffic approaching from the left, squeeze through a gap in the median, and merge into three more lanes of traffic approaching from the right. Yeah, I mean, this is an absolute motherfucker of a turn. Most people would just be like, I can't deal, I'm just, I'll am just, i find another way around this thing. Sometimes the car made the turn with aplomb, edging into the thoroughfare and waiting for a moment when it could speed into a far lane. Other times, it got stuck besides the median in the middle of the turn, its rear bumper jutting into the oncoming traffic again. True, and remember, this was the August build. A lot has improved since then. Of course, I bet you've never seen a human do this, have you? Soon, Mr. Musk noticed the videos and vowed to solve what Tesla enthusiasts began calling Chuck's turn. In the weeks that followed, Tesla equipped several test cars with a new version of its self-driving technology and sent them to Mr. Cook's neighborhood, where they spent several weeks testing the new software and gathering data that could help improve it. I actually didn't know this. I actually just learned something in the mainstream media about Tesla. This might be a first, credit where it's due. Mr. Cook and I spent a good chunk of our day asking his car to navigate the turn named after him. Each attempt was different from the last. Sometimes the cars approach much faster from the left, other times from the right. Sometimes the gap between the two was enormous, other times it was tiny. Not long after that day in Jacksonville, Tesla released a new version of a software to Mr. Cook and other beta testers. The car's display now showed a blue overlay that indicated what was a safe zone in the median. You can see here on the left, the older version, and on the right, the newer version. It's very important to show the car's mind's eye, so to speak, 
that's what the display is for. Now this doesn't show everything the car's interpreting and categorizing, but it's important as a driver to go, oh, okay, the car knows it can safely stop there. So make drivers a lot more comfortable. And remember, this isn't built on pre-maps. The vehicle is using cameras, just pure vision to look around and delineate. Okay, there's a hard edge there. That red line, that is the edge of the road. We've got median in yellow drivable space, a safe space in blue. The lane markings are super crisp too on the right here versus on the left, they're okay. When facing heavy traffic, it could navigate Chuck's turn with a precision that was not possible in the past. So if it needed to stop next to the median, it would position itself so that traffic could safely pass both in front and behind. See a video of this happening right now. I'll pause it just so we can see. Check it out, the car's in the perfect spot. It's not in anyone's way. It's waiting for a safe gap to move. This is what you want to see. Just goes to show the rate of improvement. Just a few weeks earlier with the previous build, the car had its ass hanging out into the previous lane. Not an ideal situation. Let's see if the car can actually make the turn. Come on, let's do it. And off we go. Now again, this intersection is an absolute motherfucker. As most of you will know, drivers have varying degrees of confidence in their capabilities. A lot of people would see that and go, I'm not even gonna try. So this is a really tough challenge and it's good to see progress. Chuck's turn is just one scenario among the endless scenarios that a Tesla might face on American roadways. Some are relatively common. Companies like Tesla can test and retest their technologies in these situations until they are confident the car can handle them safely. But other scenarios are rare and unexpected, what industry experts call edge cases. Quote, it is very easy to solve the first 90% of the problem, very hard to solve the last 10%. Absolutely. Mr. Clare said, referring to the decades long effort to create self-driving cars, you need to be able to handle those edge cases gracefully. Facing the unexpected. After lunch, when Mr. Cook told the car to drive us to a small neighborhood park near the river, the skies were overcast and the streets were wet from summer rain. Guided by Tesla's self-driving technology, the car drove along the river and over a bridge before reaching an intersection lined with trees. Then it turned left toward an unmarked road that ran between several giant oaks draped in Spanish moss. As the car approached the shadows beneath this mossy canopy, it suddenly changed course, turned sharply right and headed the wrong way down a one-way street. By the way, again, I just want to point out, uh, you know, as dumb as this is, people actually do this as well. I'm sure you or someone you know or you've seen somebody do the exact same thing, end up driving one way the wrong way down a one-way street after missing a turn or not exactly understanding is that where I turn or that I think just about everyone's either seen this happen or done it themselves. The moment highlighted the difference between Tesla's self-driving technology and robo-taxi services being developed by companies like Waymo owned by the same parent company as Google and Cruise backed by government motors. The robo-taxi companies are trying to reduce these unexpected moments by tightly controlling where and how the car can drive using laser sensors called LiDAR. They build three-dimensional digital maps of individual neighborhoods that give cars a fine-grained understanding of their environment. Then they spend months or even years testing cars in those contained areas, yet yeah, never a long-term scalable strategy. It can artificially create the perception of progress. It's actually a huge handicap over the long run. These companies are now preparing self-driving car services that will operate without backup drivers in places like San Francisco and Austin. But these services will have strict limitations and make the task easier. The cars will travel only in certain neighborhoods under certain weather conditions at relatively low speeds. And company technicians will provide remote assistance to cars that inevitably find themselves in situations they cannot navigate on their own. Tesla is not operating in this way. I just wanna highlight this line. This is the story of Tesla's life. Obviously, so far it's worked out okay. And it's really important to underscore this. Tesla is the only company, at least with any meaningful scale, that is attempting a generalized solution, as in pick up a Tesla, drop it on any road on earth, it'll be able to drive safely. We're not there yet, but that's the goal. Every other company competing with Tesla that's made meaningful progress has painted themselves into a corner. They are reliant upon first mapping the area in high definition and then using LiDAR, bounce a signal off objects and return it and just to make sure everything's in the same place it was last time when it was pre-mapped in HD. This is literally like a person closing their eyes and using a cane to get about the place. Just bang, 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 oh, there's an obstacle there. Not only that, but they've already memorized the obstacle course. So they're just checking. There's no new obstacles. Everything's the way it was. Okay, no problems. I can traverse this safely. This, as opposed to being artificial intelligence, is artificial dumbass. Super narrow. It's a cool party trick, but it's effectively a car on rails in a safe space. It absolutely is not scalable. Building three-dimensional maps and testing vehicles on every American roadway is impractical. Indeed. So is remote assistance. Also true. This means that Tesla cars face the unexpected more often than Waymo or Cruise cars and that testers like Chuck Hook must keep their hands on the wheel at all times. Just last week, he and his car revisited a few of the scenarios we encountered in August. Sometimes the car performed perfectly. Sometimes it did not. He drove past the motel on the way to the Bearded Pig six times and though it remained on the road three times, it mistakenly drove into the parking lot three times as well. 
When it did veer into the parking lot, it did not swerve as egregiously as it did in August. Mr Cook says he is impressed with the progress of the technology, but he also knows that far more progress is needed. Absolutely. He also knows that Tesla engineers are focused on the behaviour of his car and that others may not perform as well in situations that have not been closely scrutinised. By the way, just a quick note on that. You guys and girls remember Galley's monorail test? Remember the car's like, what the f**k's going on? Neck minute? Tesla's occupancy network solved that huge problem. So Tesla is not only deploying these vehicles, just generally getting feedback and improving, collecting data, blah, blah, blah. But in addition to that, there are some special cases that gain special attention from Tesla that highlight a big problem they need to solve. And they'll put some extra resources onto those specific problems. Chuck's turn is one, the monorail test another. Now I don't know for sure that the monorail test is where the occupancy networks came from, but rest assured, Tesla's occupancy networks have now solved that problem. Quote, the technology is not ready to take the driver out of the seat, Mr. Cook told me on a recent morning. Quote, as they continue to iterate on the hardware and the software, it is like a salmon going up river. <laughs> Great quote. After releasing the new beta, Mr. Musk softened his claims about the immediate future of the technology. He now says the technology will not be widely available until next year. Well, remember, we already have FSD wide release, it's November, so yeah. And that regulators are unlikely to approve it for use without hands on the wheel. Autopilot still requires this oversight. Federal regulators have spent the past several months investigating a series of crashes involving Autopilot, and they have not yet revealed the results. Safety experts worry that the arrival of full self-driving will lead to more accidents. Quote, it is inevitable, said Jake Fisher, Senior Director of Conjob Reports. No, wait, that's wrong. Conchu Moron Reports. No, Conjob Distorts. You know, the company with funding from Ford and Government Motors that suddenly shits on Tesla 24-7. You know, the same fuck faces that literally showed people how to do really dangerous, illegal things in Tesla vehicles. Zero credibility whatsoever. Conjob Reports is a corrupt organization. Nothing they say about Tesla at all carries any weight. Sorry, but it's true. They have proven their bias to be so intense, so all-encompassing. I will never take anything they ever say about Tesla seriously again. Period. The reason that I take issue with this particular comment from Jake Dipsh**, claiming that it's inevitable that full self-driving will lead to more accidents, at least based on the way this article frames this quote, is that this is a huge stretch. Drivers are required to pay attention, monitor, and be ready to intervene at any moment. There's no evidence that there's been an increase in collisions. In fact, the opposite is true. People are paying far more diligent attention while using this software. Let's move on. Quote, the problem comes as this system gets better and people get complacent. It will still do the unexpected. Now that is a fair point. And funnily enough, this last little bit of FUD is the end of the article. It's the final thing people hear that they most remember. Overall, I've got to say, I'm relatively impressed with this article. It wasn't a hit piece, which is rare. It wasn't a FUD tsunami, which was rare. It was relatively unbiased, which is rare. They talked about the good and the bad. They made a lot of reasonable points. And it's actually really refreshing to see this kind of coverage in the mainstream media. Instead of debunking a load of horse shit line by line, which is what I'm usually doing, I actually enjoyed this. I'm sure there'll be more articles like this to come in the future. Now, one final point that's really, really, really important. I did touch on it. FSD beta has now gone wide release in the US. This is a huge moment, a watershed moment for Tesla. They're on the cusp of unlocking a decker trillion dollar opportunity with autonomy. And now, close to a million people in the United States will have voluntary access to this software. More people using it, more data, it gets better, and so on. Many people have been concerned. When will Tesla get regulatory approval? How could they possibly deploy this software? There's gonna be a million people, give or take, in the US already using their software. Yes, they will still need to pay attention. But the point is, it's already gonna be on their fucking vehicles. You know what happens from here, right? Eventually, FSD beta becomes FSD. The wide release goes from North America to global. And then, at some point in the future, as the software continues to improve and Tesla has the data to show the interventions, the collisions, and so on, at some point, with the software already available and functioning on people's vehicles, Tesla can say, oh, hey guys, guess what? Now, you don't even need to pay attention. You can go to sleep if you want. You can play some games, put on some Barry White, do whatever you want. You know we're gonna to need to pay attention. Now, I don't know when the regulatory approval happens, but I'm just showing the roadmap for how this software goes from tiny little beta release to everyone on earth able to use it to next minute you don't even need to pay attention. It's like a Trojan horse strategy. The software's now out there. Anyone in North America who's got the software package can now use this. This is insane. It's already happened. The robot taxi fleet is starting to wake up. Groggily, drunkenly, and incompetently, don't get me wrong, it's still a way to go. But this is one of the biggest moments in Tesla history, and I don't think people are getting it, especially stock investors. So, something to consider. Don't forget, head over to Patreon to unlock a ton of exclusive content. I posted another video today. First time this has ever happened. I tried to react to somebody sharing his or her or its, I don't know, I don't want to offend anyone, I'm just trying to not assume. Their reaction and thoughts to Elon Musk's Twitter takeover. This guy's literally one of the dumbest motherfuckers to ever live. And reacting to the video was so painful, it literally hurt my brain that I couldn't finish. I couldn't make it to the end of this video. That's how much it hurt. That's how wrong this guy was. That's how embarrassing and painful it was to listen to. So fair warning, if you're anything like me, you're gonna have a hard time watching it, but if you can handle it, it's definitely interesting to see what some of the morons out there have to say about Elon and Twitter. The hilarious thing 
is at almost the exact same time that that video went live, Jordan Peterson made a great tweet pointing out the EDC of the people who were trolling Elon Musk and his Twitter turnaround, which, depending on who you ask, is either one of the greatest corporate turnarounds in history or just proof that Elon Musk is a moron, his vanity project is a failure, he doesn't know what he's doing and he should have just left things as they were, aka, hey Elon, you're doing it wrong. So if you want to get frustrated to death, check out today's Patreon video and if not, why not browse through the archive of 220 plus other exclusive videos. So, see you over there. Love ya.